Hi, Adam here from Audio Imperia, and we are thrilled to announce Constrictor. Cinematic Tension Strings. Recorded once again with Budapest scoring, Constrictor brings the most chilling and unnerving cinematic string sounds to life in an incredibly playable and easy to use manner within our pyramid engine. With a large number of multi-sampled articulations, most of which are uniform across the entire string section, Constrictor presents a variety of options when it comes to adding an extra dimension to your writing. With sustains, risers, downers, runs, clusters and both tonal and atonal shorts, Constrictor really is a multi-dimensional, deeply sampled library with up to four dynamic layers and seven round robins, culminating in a fully NKS compatible library that sits at around 30 gigabytes. To capture Constrictor, we recorded a 21 piece string section consisting of 10 violins, four violas, four celli, and three basses. These players were recorded in standard orchestral seating positions, allowing Constrictor to effortlessly blend with our existing cinematic range and other orchestral libraries you may own. We've categorized and designed the articulations in Constrictor in an easy to navigate structure, which makes finding unique textures and browsing the entire library incredibly intuitive. Each instrument comes with seven different NKIs. These are sustains, cluster sustains, tonal shorts, atonal shorts, cluster runs, risers, and downers. The violins also come with a bonus set of harmonic clusters. We're also including a set of logic articulation switches and Cubase expression maps for quick and easy integration into any template or workflow. These will be available from our website under the product page. Let's have a listen. Now I'm not going to play you through every articulation in this library in this walkthrough, simply because there are hundreds here and we would be here for a long time if I tried to do that. Instead, what I'm going to do is play you through a selection of some of our favorite articulations in each category. And hopefully that'll give you a real feel for what this library is all about. So let's start by having a look at some of the sustain patches in Constrictor. And we're going to start off with the 10 violins. And this is a patch called the quarter note bend. So as you can hear, very eerie, this kind of undulating, tense, nervous pattern. And we sampled this across the range of the violin, so you can get a lot of different textures and patterns going on here. Let me just show you. We've also sampled at multiple dynamic layers, so that's helping shape the volume and intensity. So let's move on now to the basses, and we've chosen an articulation here called Come Together, and you'll hear exactly why we've called it that. So you can hear it's this powerful atonal cluster and it all converges into one unison note. Very, very powerful on these basses. Nice sustain there at the end. And this is sampled across the octaves, so you've got a lot of choice here in terms of what pitches you're using. Great stuff. So let's move on now to another violin patch, and this one is called The Swarm. So 
So as you can hear then, very nervous, tremulating patch, a lot of activity going on there. And we have quite a few of these textural sustain patches across all these different instruments. So be sure to check each one out and see how they all work. We'll move on to the next patch now. And this one is called harmonic clusters to scratch. So what this means is these cellos are playing clustered harmonics and they're gradually increasing the pressure on the bow. And that's creating this kind of awful scratching sound, but great for this kind of horror and tension stuff. So if I just show you what that sounds like. Great stuff for creating tension, building a kind of texture throughout maybe the climax of a piece. You can really imagine how these would come in handy. Okay, let's move on to our final patch for the sustains. And this one is a violas patch and it's called Skin Crawlers. And again, I'm sure you'll see why once you hear it. Again, could be great as a texture, could be great as a feature, and we've sampled it across the range of the violas, so you can get some interesting chords and interesting harmonies going on. Incidentally, while we're on the sustain patches, something I want to mention about this library is if you take virtually any articulation in this library, particularly something from the sustains or the cluster sustains, and you take it down an octave, two octaves, three octaves, you get all kinds of amazing new textures and articulations. It's pretty much like an entirely different library. So there's so much sound design potential with these as well. Let me just give you an example here. I'm going to take this down, let's say two octaves, and just see what we get. great stuff. You can imagine how all this stuff would be invaluable for sound design and creating really interesting textures. And again, because this is sampled across the range of the instrument in most cases, you have virtually limitless opportunities to create textures by combining different pitch classes and combining different instruments in ways that will create endless sound design opportunities. endless fun. So let's take a quick look at some of the harmonic clusters now. These are specific to violins and these are going to be various clusters played uh, using harmonics. Some are going to be played with waivers, some are going to be played straight. So I'll have a listen to a couple of these examples quickly and just go through what they sound like. This is one of the higher harmonics and it's got a waver, a sort of quarter tone waver in it too. So if I just play what that sounds like. And you can hear these harmonic clusters have different dynamic ranges built into them so you can cycle between those. So these are really great at introducing some high-end energy to your composition, some of that harmonic material that's really going to cut through in the mix and offer a lot of tension um, and a lot of atmosphere. 
Now we're moving on to the cluster sustains. Now with the clusters, we didn't just want to sample the whole string orchestra in one go and give you a small range to choose from. We sampled each individual instrument and we sampled across the range of that instrument and we sampled a whole bunch of different articulations. So you can see here we've got swells, sustains, crescendos, diminuendos, we've got sol pont, tremolo, we've got an absolutely huge variety here and you can mix and match and combine these in various different ways so the choices when creating clusters are kind of endless, there's so many different ways that you can combine these. What I've done here just to save time is loaded all the different instruments into one contact so I can play them almost like an ensemble patch and that way we can just go through some of these different cluster types and give you an idea of what they sound like. So we're going to go through the Arco cluster sustains here. Arco, in case you don't know, just means bowed basically. So these are sort of the bread and butter cluster sustains. I'm just going to play you a few different varieties. <laughs> So you can see there's endless ways to combine these. You can sort of never get the same cluster twice. And I think that's really good when creating this kind of music because it just gives you endless opportunities to create different textures, different pitch classes, different styles of clusters and types of clusters. And that's really gonna help you find the one that works best in your composition as opposed to just having a finite set to choose from. So we're going to move on to the next set here I've got now. And again, I've loaded all these up into a kind of ensemble patch. And these are the swells more specifically the tremolo sol pont swells. And again, I'm just gonna play you a few random notes on the keyboard, give you a sense of what these sound like. So you can hear these articulations have a kind of crescendo, then a diminuendo. Absolutely great for just creating these swells at key points in your compositions. And again, you don't have to use these as an ensemble like I am here. You could pick and choose individual instrument groups. So you might just want the violins or you might just want the violas or cellis, for example. And it just allows you so many different ways of putting these things together to create really interesting textures and sounds. So we've moved on now to the next group and these are the tremolo cluster crescendos. So these are not swells that go up and down. These are just crescendos. And again, I think I'll just best to play these and you can get a sense of what they're like yourself. And you can go so many different ways with these. For example, you could have quite sparse textures like. Or you could put your hands down and mash the keyboard and just come up with these huge big textures. And because of the way we recorded the orchestra, it's not a too big ensemble, not a too small ensemble you can really stack these up and they still sound quite natural, or you can use them just as individual notes and they've still got a lot of power behind them. So if I just play a random note. Still sounds powerful, still sounds like a real string orchestra. But if I... That works equally well and that's me just mashing my hand down on seven or eight different keys at once. 
And so now we come to the final articulation we're going to look at in the cluster sustains. So these are the tremolo, cluster, sol, pont, diminuendo. So these are played tremolo, sol, pont near the bridge, and we're starting loud and, and gradually coming down in volume. So again, I'll just play these and you'll get an idea of what I mean. So these would be great for just creating these little punctuation marks and then just bringing things back down to a lower level. And like the rest of the clusters, they sound great whether you're pressing one key or 10. Incredibly useful stuff. Now let's move on to look at some of the tonal shorts in this library. Now, strictly speaking, nothing in this library is tonal as such, but these were recorded in a kind of linear structure, whereas the atonal shorts are a lot more random and chaotic. So you've got a good blend of those two elements. And we're just going to start with the violins and the clustered stabs and just have a little listen to these. So you can hear incredibly useful, aggressive, short articulations here. And those clusters really just have such a menacing feel to them. And again, these are very easy to stack up if you play them individual notes like this. Sound great, but you can also play combinations. And again, like the rest of this library, we've recorded across the range of the instruments and across each instrument. So you can have endless combinations. And just to show you that, I'll just show you the cello clustered stabs too. So these are great just to mash your hands on the keyboard and see what you come up with and you know there's so many different combinations. So we're going to move on to a slightly different articulation now. These are called the ricochet stabs and they're being played on the basses in this case. And ricochet is essentially when the players almost sort of drag their bow across the strings and you get this kind of ricochet, this bouncing effect. It just sounds really interesting. Now we have something slightly different on the violas here. We have the pizzicato gliss clusters. Let's have a listen to these. So essentially the players are plucking the strings in clusters, but they're also sliding their fingers up the fingerboard as well. These are what we call the chainsaw stabs, and we have a few different articulations in the chainsaw stabs. These are the gliss ups, so I'll show you. So incredibly aggressive gliss on the celli there uh, has a really interesting texture to it. And finally, we're going to look at the Molto Pont Cluster Falls on the basses. If I just play you these. So just a cluster and the players are sliding their fingers down the fingerboard, creating this interesting sort of pitch descent. Again, just so many interesting sounds that you wouldn't get from a standard orchestral library. So great to be able to layer into your compositions to create more interesting sound. So we're moving on to some of the atonal shorts now. Again, there's an absolutely vast collection of articulations across each instrument. So we're going to look at first what we've called the insect stabs. And we've got a whole different bunch of insect stabs. But these are the gliss down insect stabs on the violin. So if I just play you these. Really interesting textures there. The players are playing very high up. Quite nasty sounds, but great stuff for decoration and embellishment in compositions that need a lot of tension, a lot of horror elements. So we're now moving on to what we've called the bass shrieks. And if I just play you these. Sampled with multiple rain robins, just really interesting, aggressive sounds. 
We're now moving on to a different type of insect stab, and these are in the celli, and this one's called the long swell. We're now moving on to the random stabs, and these ones are in the violas. And in this case, we just got the players to play a whole bunch of short, sharp, random notes. They could play whatever they wanted to, and we just recorded a bunch of these and then just put them together. So a more random, chaotic sound than the clustered stabs we heard in the tonal shorts. But you could layer these up, you could add them together, you could use different ones at different points. Again, so many different ways to combine and contrast these different sounds together. And finally, in the atonal shorts, we're looking at the celli low overpressure stabs. Now this basically means a stab, but the players were instructed to play very heavy bow pressure, almost like a kind of scratching texture as opposed to a pitch texture. So you can hear what that sounds like. really nasty sounds and again these are totally easy to layer up with the other stabs in the library there's so many different types across the tonal and atonal categories so I urge you to just explore combine stack them up see what happens that's what this library is all about just finding endless ways to create these interesting horrific very tense very nasty sounds we're now going to look at some of the runs and risers that we've recorded for this library. So in the case of the risers, we've done a whole bunch of different risers, two bar risers, half bar risers, four bar risers. And with the runs, we've also put together a whole different collection of quite unusual, quite aggressive sounding runs. So we're going to start with the violins playing ascending runs. And that sounds like this. So in this case, half the violins are playing almost a gliss run, so they're just sliding their fingers up the fingerboard, and half are playing a played run. It creates quite an interesting texture when you combine the two together. We're now going to move on to the basses, and this is a sol pont riser in its one bar. And again, we've sampled these across the range or some of the range of the instrument, so you've got multiple different choices. And I reckon these are another articulation that would just sound really interesting pitch down. So let's just take them down two octaves and have some fun and see what we get. Yeah, really interesting stuff there. So these have so much life in them in the ways that you can pitch them up, pitch them down, mangle them, just see what happens with them. Again, that's the nature of this library. It's all about finding interesting sounds and interesting soundscapes. So we're going to move on to the viola pizzicato risers now. And as you might guess, these are being played pizzicato. So a really interesting textured riser here. Really useful stuff there. The next articulations we're gonna look at are another set of runs, and these are called chaos runs, and in this case they're descending and they're being played on the celli. So again, recorded across the range of the instrument, and as you can hear, these are very frenetic, very tense sounding runs, not like a traditional orchestral run. Great to add some tension and some excitement in transitions and we have these ascending and descending as well we're now going to move on to the tremolo riser to scratch in the violins and what this means is like previous articulations we're scratching it as the articulation plays through the bow pressure on the string becomes heavier and heavier so the sound becomes more and more scratched and distorted and just a lot more horrific So you end in with these really nasty distorted clusters. And the final thing we're going to listen to here is some of the four bar risers. But again, I've just stacked these in a kind of ensemble fashion. So you can really get a sense of what it sounds like when you layer these all together.
really great stuff. And again, because we've got various different lengths of riser and various different types of riser, Arco, Solpont, Tremolo, etc. You can find so many different ways to combine these all together to create kind of your own risers and, and your own sound design with them. So I urge you to explore that. There's endless combinations to be enjoyed here. Now, finally, we're going to look at some of the downers in this library, and I'm just going to play through some of these quite quickly. I'm not going to explain too much because I think at this point it's all pretty self-explanatory. So these are the 10 violin arco downers, two bars long. So great downer sounds there again, sampled across some of the range of the instruments. So a lot of choices when it comes to selecting the right downer for the right moment. We're going to move on to the viola sol pont downers now, and these are the one bar downers. So a bit shorter, a bit sharper. And finally, we're going to move on to some tremolo downers. These are in the celli, and these are played sol pont and for half a bar. In combination with our classic and modern mix, Constrictor also allows users to tailor their own specific sound with the individual microphone positions. Constrictor has four different positions available to you, including a close mic for a drier, more intimate sound. Constrictor has been recorded in situ, meaning the close mics have the seating position of each member of the ensemble already accounted for when panning. We then have a standard decatry position, which sounds like this. Then we also have the outriggers. And finally, the far mics. With the release of Constrictor, the team have built a new feature within our pyramid engine called Round Robin Selector. This system allows you to select the specific round robins you want present or not present within your own personal instrument. For atonal articulations, it also allows you to experiment and find your favoured round robin within each particular articulation, giving you confidence and control over the specific sound you want for your composition. Let's have a look at how this works. The number of round robins available for each articulation can be seen here in the round robin circles. As we change articulations, the number of available round robins changes within the selector. As a key is repeated within an articulation, the active round robin is coloured yellow. Clicking a round robin deactivates it and shows a hollow circle within the selector. Now, as we cycle through the round robins, the deactivated ones will not be triggered. This is especially useful if you find one round robin out of place, or you find a favourite one that you want to remain the same throughout your composition. Enabling the select round robin by a key switch button toggles a separate set of purple keys to appear within your contact keyboard. Now every round robin is available as a key switch, and will automatically trigger as a solo round robin when selected this way. The round robin selector can be triggered either through each articulation, or the individual keys within the range for further customization. This way you can customize and tailor your instrument to your own style. And finally, we're going to have a look at some of the contact multi-patches that the team here at Audio Imperio have put together for you. These are a curated collection of articulations that the team have put together that we think are really useful, really inspiring, and we're really happy to get some ideas done quickly. So I'm just going to have a quick look through some of my favourites and give you an idea of what these multis are like.
And that brings us pretty much to the end of this video. I hope this walkthrough has been really useful for you. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the box below. And if you need to get in touch with us, do so using the email on the screen.